Well, folks, I am back a little bit here. We are going to go over, I, in my opinion, one of the strongest knives ever made. And when you think of military knives, the first thing that comes to mind is you have a mental image of the United States Marine Corps K-Bar knife. Well, the military also contracted many other types of knives, folding knives, uh, tactical knives. But this one in particular has been around for a long time, almost as long as the TL-29 electric knife that I've done a video on. This one is <clears throat> your pocket knife that was issued to the troops, very popular in the Vietnam War era. And then from there on, it kind of, it kind of uh, faded out a little bit. But it was made all the way up throughout the 90s. And uh, Camellius made these. Like all knives, the decline in quality from the original spec uh, was evident. Um, and I will show that to you. And that's why the older knives, not only because they're older, but uh, they, they are manufactured a little bit better. And from year to year, they made cost-cutting measures to make these knives more affordable. What makes these knives so strong? Well, first of all, they're made out of completely metal. All right. Um, they're manufactured of just outstanding quality. Even the ones that were made in the 90s, you really can't tell a difference between any of the models that were made. They were all made really tight. Uh, the back springs on these things are bulletproof. There's no gaps, nothing like that. Now, these are not knives that you would look at like a case knife and say, wow, that's so beautiful. These knives were made to use. If you notice, they use button head rivets on these things. Now, what makes these so, so much stronger than the flush head rivets is that typically a pocket knife, where it's going to fail um, is when you're utilizing it, it's going to come, it's going to separate. The rivet is basically going to pull through the bolster or the bone or whatever type of material is here to give this knife, basically keep it together like a sandwich. All right, well, these use button heads. In order for this to separate, literally this rivet would have to break off. Um, and not only that, once it breaks off, then you're left with a knife that is just like a flush head rivet, and then that would have to actually back out. So instead of the rivet uh, maintaining its strength by pushing outwards, all right, it's actually pushing outwards and it has a cap on top of it. And that's what makes these button head rivets so much stronger. Um, the knife has four different blades on it. It has a can opener, a blade, a screwdriver, and bottle opener, and an awl. All right. Now, if you look at the older model, I have a really, here's an older one. This was made in 1971. All right. And if you can see the, the slight difference in these knives, I'll show them to you. Um, for instance, uh, you can look at the awl right here on this. And this is the older model. You can see this one has a, def a definite uh, ridge on the top. And then also it's finished really nicely. It was obviously finished by hand. All right. Now the newer one actually has a sharpened edge right here. So I'd actually say this would be a more effective awl. But this one would actually take more manpower to make. All right. So they actually did make an improvement in my opinion. All right. Now, if you take the screwdriver blade right here, you'll notice that the older one has a little thumb stud in order to pull it out of the knife easier. All right. Not really needed. And it isn't. But it is a really nice thumb stud. It's got little uh, grooving on it. And it's really nicely done. But not needed. So they eliminated it. You have your can opener. Now the can opener, in my opinion, on the older ones is nicer because you have a sharpened edge and you can see that it has a indentation right here. Notice that the new one is just a stamped piece of uh, material. Okay. And then you have the cutting edge. And this one has a very pronounced uh, tip on it where the newer ones are more rounded. All right. So that's just an example of the older models, if you guys are interested in trying to find one of those. That was in 1971. I believe in 70 they stopped doing the, the, that particular, those particular things, and for cost-cutting measures, they went to the simpler design. Um, most of them are stamped U.S., all right? 
this one right here is stamped United States Marine Corps. Here's another one that's stamped United States Marine Corps. And here's one that's stamped United States Navy, which is really cool uh, for me. I really like that. I don't know if this magnifying glass will help you guys any. Take a closer look. And then I have a really special one here. This one was, now these are actually in, in boxes. I have these on my website. If you go just below the video, you can click on my website and you can pull up these. These are, I think I'm selling these for $40. Uh, these are fantastic. Uh, $40 because they're in a, a plastic case. And they're absolutely brand new and beautiful. I believe these were made in, in 81. It's got a little history of the knives in there. And these are just beautiful. Now these, you will not be able to find these on my website. Um, <clears throat> what's, what's, uh, what I am going to offer is uh, I'm going to sell these for $30 shipped. All right. Meaning $30. You, uh, just send me your email and uh, I'll send you an invoice for one of these. Uh, and I'll send it out to you for 30 bucks. Uh, these are beautiful. And these have a little bit of storage marking and all that stuff. Uh, but nothing, I mean, they're unused. They've just been in a drawer for quite a while. Uh, real tight. Uh, all your back springs on these things are just, I mean, like I said, these things were really made to use. And you can see how this thing snaps open. Um, just beautiful. So if you're looking for one of the strongest knives ever built, um, this is the ticket right here. So for 30 bucks, you can have probably the best pocket knife. And what I like about the blade on this, it's really usable. Um, I mean, you can spread your peanut butter on your peanut butter sandwich if you like. You can cut your apple. Um, these blades take a really nice edge. Uh, Camille's has, in my opinion, probably the best blade material out there. It's really hard to beat them. Uh, it's very easy to resharpen these knives. Um, it's, it's just very easy for the beginner. This blade shape is very easy to resharpen. As a first knife, as a child's knife, as a Boy Scout knife, I highly recommend this knife. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And real quick, um, all these are dated. So the blade will be stamped. If I can show the you. The blade will be stamped with camellias and an actual date. 19, this one's uh, 1991. Let's see what one of these is. This is 1978. Nineteen eighty four, nineteen eighty three, nineteen eighty one, and I'd be happy to go through these for you if, if you have a, a particular year you're looking for. I'll try to find it. If I don't have it, I'll just send you one out pretty close to that. Um, but like I said, I got a bunch of dates nineteen eighty four. 1984, 1993, and the bells on these are real nice. They stay in place. They don't flop around. Why is that important? Um, because uh, bells that flop around end up falling right in front of your blade, and your blade ends up closing on it, and you end up chipping your blade. Um, these blades, uh, these bells stay in place, and. Uh, Instead of being a hindrance to the knife, they're actually a useful part of it. Really strong bell. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe and uh, take care. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it.